In today's gospel, we find the call of both Simon and Andrew, as well as James and John. Jesus is walking by and sees these men and calls them. They are at the docks, in boats, both casting and mending nets. James and John are with their dad, Zebedee. Here were fishermen, fishing. They have woken up early to be the first at the pier. They beat the other boats out to sea so that they could have the first choice as to where to throw their nets. James and John are now mending their nets to go back out. They've already been out once, been back, and are now preparing to go back out again. It's here where Jesus comes and says, follow me. Come on, come and do what I'm doing. A few years ago, I was in North Carolina visiting my family and spending time with my nephew when he decided that he wanted us to play follow the leader. So I walked around the house and he followed. When I raised my arms, he raised his. When I marched, he marched. When I went outside, he went outside. And then, and then it was his turn. Where he walked, I followed, and so on. Jesus calls Peter, Andrew, James, and John to follow him, to come and do what he is doing. This sets up a majority of the New Testament and beyond. Jesus preaches, and these apostles follow his lead, and they preach. Jesus exercises demons, and the apostles go on to exercise demons. Jesus spreads the word of God to the world, and these men go on to spread the word of God. There's a Latin phrase that's imago dei. It means made in the image of God. We as people are created in that image, in the image of God. And as such, we are held in a special relationship. We are creators made by a creator. We as people were made when God breathed his breath into the dirt of creation. We, above all of creation, are able to engage in complex relationships with the world around us and care for creation in a way that nothing else can. We are formed in the image of God, and Jesus calls us to follow his lead in ministry. I think this is why Jesus sought out some fishermen. Fishermen know about waking up early. Fishermen know about working hard. Fishermen know the frustration that comes after all the preparation and work of getting ready, casting out their nets, and then not pulling anything back. Fishermen know about the frugality of mending the old nets we have and not wasting money on new nets if they are not needed. Fishermen know about casting their hopes into the unknown seas and hoping that something is drawn out of those waters. God is no stranger to casting things into the waters. In the book of Genesis, we read that it was on the second day when God separated the sky from the water, and it was the third day that the land was separated from the water. And as Genesis continues and existence continues, God continues to throw the net of his saving love into the depths of creation, hoping that people will be drawn out of the chaos and into his loving care. God gave Noah a net 
to pull his family out of the chaos of sin and life. God gave Joseph a net to pull the children of Israel out of a drought. God gave Moses a net to pull the Israelites out of the depths of slavery and oppression under the tyranny of the Egyptian government. So it should not come as a surprise in the New Testament that Jesus comes looking for fishermen to be fishers of people. Looking for people who know how to navigate the seas when they get stormy, when the boat starts to rock, when there's water filling the hole, when the world is in chaos. People who know how to haul that precious cargo into the safety of the boat without losing one. Follow me, Jesus says. Bring the skills you have, the things that you already know how to do. Bring those. You'll be doing that in a different way as you follow me. This is the call. It is the call to Simon Peter, to Andrew, to James, and to John. It is the call to you and to me. Come and bring what you are and who you are as a loved child of God to this place, this community, this ministry, and let yourself be yourself, following Christ in what Christ is doing. Are you a good communicator? Try communicating the gospel in new and powerful ways. Are you a communicator? Come, help us try to communicate the gospel in new and powerful ways in our life now amid a pandemic. Are you a teacher? Great, come and try to help us share the word by teaching people in new ways in the history of the church. Do you have business acumen? Great. Then let's talk about investing in hope, the returns of trust, and increasing the bottom line of faith as we build the kingdom of heaven here on earth together. Now I have a question which may seem silly, but it will get us to a point. Have you ever bought a piece of furniture from Ikea. For those of us in Columbus, we know that there is an Ikea up in Polaris. Ikea, that fun Swedish company with great meatballs in their cafeteria. The majority of things sold at Ikea, however, require some degree of at-home assembly. Now what makes this challenging is that the directions that the furniture typically comes with are merely pictures and often not at all helpful pictures. So, like many people, I tend to disregard those directions with the famous vote of personal confidence that is wrapped up in the phrase, well, I can figure this out myself. And thus, I have spent hours of my life putting things together incorrectly. This goes to say, that often when we find ourselves going down what we think is the right path, in reality, what we are doing is the wrong thing. As followers of Jesus, we have a tendency to get our vision for what things look like so firm in our head that we lose the ability to see God's plan. We think, I know where this is ending. I don't need the instructions. I don't need to check the user's manual. I don't need to consult the scriptures or ask a God in prayer. And then we end up causing a big mess. We start trusting our thoughts instead of following Jesus and the example that Jesus gives us. And to make it a little more complex, God has a history of changing God's mind. We see this written in the book of Jonah, chapter 3, verse 10, where the text clearly says, Then God changed his mind. This is not a lone occurrence in the Bible either. God, at one point, was sorry for the state of the world, 
to the point where God was ready to start again. And then God changed his mind when he saw Noah and then told Noah to build the ark. God was angry at the Israelites once for making a golden calf, and God was ready to show them his anger. But then, after a conversation with Moses, God changed his mind. God sent Jonah to tell the Ninevites that they were wicked and about to feel his wrath. Jonah did it, and then God changed his mind, sparing the Ninevites. God changing God's mind does not mean that God is wrong. It merely means that God wanted to try something else. This is the difference between furniture and fishing. There is a right way and a wrong way to put a chair together. But when casting nets, we try and try and try, trying new places and new things, always hoping to bring in more fish and more people. There is a wrong way to build a church. The history of these United States is filled with horrendous and shameful stories about the wrong decisions of people building buildings and establishments on fear and hatred and judgment. But there's one way to follow Jesus, and that is to follow his lead, to do what Jesus does with forgiveness, patience, and humility, to extend peace, humanity, respect, and grace to all people, to constantly cast our nets in different places. Across his ministry, Jesus traveled with prostitutes, ate with tax collectors, healed the children of dignitaries, and fed the poor. The diversity of all of these experiences do not contradict each other. They are not wrong. They are ministry done in care, integrity, and a love of the entire world. We are called to follow, though the path we end up on might not be the path we thought that we would take. It might feel like a bait and switch sometimes when we end up in a place different than what we thought, but it is not because the constant is the love, grace, and mercy of Jesus Christ that we receive, that we share, and that we are called to cast out into this world for one another. Amen.